guys, as you can tell by the thumbnail, we are here. We are getting our first ever club fitting done. We're at the doghouse in Barrie. Club customization, full club bag, fittings, anything you need in the golf game, they got you covered. The link will be posted in the description. You know what to do. Oh yeah, like so you can warm up with whatever. Okay. Um, at some point we'll capture a bunch of seven irons just to have like a baseline for us to compare whatever we try against it. We'll test a bunch of stuff, you know, kind of just rattle through a bunch of shafts and head combos until you find something that you like. And then we'll fine tune it from there basically. So, so we're just sort of trying to find uh, like a big picture thing as far as like a head that you like looking at and doesn't feel terrible. And then a lot of the shaft stuff will be towards the end when we're basically trying to find like that, that perfect setup that, you know, so the head will be like the first yeah, component. Yeah. Funny though, like, um, well, you're definitely not slow. What does it get? Gap wedge? Uh, yeah, 50, 52. 52, yeah. Yeah, I can tell you right now, your iron setup is absolutely terrible for how you swing it. <laughs> I can, I know, I have regular. Yeah, regular flex graphite. Yeah. And like you're swinging gap wedge 93 and it looks like you're not even trying. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. so I'll let you hit a bunch. We realistically need between five and like 12 shots that are decent. They don't have to be perfect, but if they're like particularly bad, like you lay sod over one, we'll delete it. Cause okay. obviously if you chunk the crap out of it, there's no point in averaging that. But we're really just looking for like a decent sample size that we can compare against something else. And then we'll, we'll get after that with the same thing. And then what's the miss primarily with, uh, with irons in general? See, like, or is it just sporadic? It's, I wouldn't say sporadic. I, I have this, this, but this is like pretty good now. Like I don't have it as bad. I have right. that spray, right? If I do have to go after it, the, when I go after it, the tendency is to pull the hard pull. Left. Okay. But I do always, I guess, fade that little flare. All right. Now, do you hit it solid most of the time? I want to say, yeah. Like above 70% for sure? Yeah. Okay. I would say that. All right. I like that average, 70%. I'll go above that. I'm just like excited to see because like you said, these clubs are, I already knew off the hop, like these clubs are not, not for you. Yeah. No. Yeah. Like, so, so just for reference, right? So the average club speed for seven iron on the PGA tour, it, it's probably a little faster than this. Like they, there's charts right above that computer there that show like all your average distances and whatever, if you want to take a look at it. But okay, that was from 2012 and it was like 90 miles an hour was the average club speed. It's a little bit faster. It's probably like 93 or something like that. Maybe 94. Okay. And you're at a hundred in running shoes in December. <laughs> Yeah. So like you're, you're swinging it at the higher levels of like professional golf, like your Rory McIlroy's, your Dustin Johnson's, they're going to be like low 100s with their mid irons realistically. And you're using essentially, you know, ladies flex golf clubs. Yes. And then expecting to hit it straight. And you're like, yeah, some go right, some go left. Well, yeah, the shaft is going to be all over the place. I know. That's like, why like, like now, 100%. that's what a big thing was, was slowing down like yeah. my tempo. Because I was trying to make these, trying well, to make yeah, these and that's work, it. And then right? you'll overdo, or you'll over smooth it and you'll hit these like wipey blocks to the right. And then yes. you hammer it, shaft kicks too early, slams the face shut. And you just hit like a rocket pole that goes 230 with the seven iron sometimes. So yeah, this is basically what we're gonna like spend most of our time doing. Like once we get a few different club setups on the board, we can compare like averages. So obviously, like we can look at good shot to good shot, bad shot to bad shot, but on you know the average is where we really care about what it's doing. Yes. And then how tight is that? You know that that deviation between shots. So average speed, head speed's ninety nine, ball speed's one thirty one, but there's a huge disparity. Like you have one that's one like one thirty nine. And then you got a couple in the low 120s. A lot of times it's just going to be like obviously miss hits and stuff like that. But it can be um, you struggling with shaft timing to a certain degree. 
Okay. Like especially when the stuff's too soft, which we know already that this is definitely the case. Too light and too soft. And you're gonna lose control as to where that sweet spot is in space. Okay. So if I fit you with a correct shaft setup with like a you know a game improvement hammer and we get the spin correct and the shaft's not all over the place, you are going to hit it miles. You'll hit it like two thirty with seven iron. Now, okay. as fun as that sounds, yeah, you're gonna need that. fifteen wedges on the bottom yeah, of the yeah. bag, which gets expensive and you're gonna have like, you know, seven iron will be your longest iron. It just is, it doesn't practically make sense. Yeah, no. So we'll be looking at heads that are, in theory, harder to hit. That's why I was asking you the question, like how often you hit it solid. Above seventy percent, like you're going to be able to hit most clubs. I'm not going to be putting you in muscle blacks or anything like that. But you know, like a T100 or a T150 style head, okay. you know, a P790, that can be an option as well. Something like that that's like not super chunky and going to be like just launching 250 yard six irons, but gives you enough spin that you can actually control it. Sounds good. That makes sense. Yeah. So that's where we're going to start. So I'm just going to build something and then we'll just kind of go down the list. Sounds good. Like different shaft and a different head. And we'll just try it until you find something that you really click with. And then we'll sample some different shaft setups and then go from there. Cool. Yeah. All right. Oh man. So these are the ZX7. Yes, sir. The feeling already, it just feels like I have like a more, if I was going to walk into combat, yeah, this is like a more superior weapon than what I was swinging. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, that feels so nice. Yeah. So like, immediately. Oh my god. So like I was saying about launch angle, right? So you were averaging like 18, and I was like, yeah, we want like 13 to 16. So there's 16. Spin dropped a ton. Ball speed's roughly the same. You didn't even hit it super solid either. It was a little healy, but we're getting like good carry. It's not so spinny and uncontrollable. And obviously it sounds and feels more solid. Yeah, that feels right? yeah. Like regardless of where we end up, we basically can't really go wrong. I could just build you a club and say, here, order it'll these. Be better and than it'll that. be immediately better than that. So, you know, that's the good news for you. We basically can't make a mistake or too big of a mistake. But now we're just going to try and find like the perfect setup that you like the most out of like, you know, what this feel like I'm going to say everything yeah. feels so good because of like how bad those yeah, are. Yeah, 100%. But a lot of your, you know, your, your random like left and rights that are like really bad will go away. The fact that you get to do this all the time is crazy. It's pretty fun. Yeah, just to dial into like the every other every person is a different like yeah. not a different problem, but it's like a different puzzle, you know? Yeah. And most people's equipment, they don't really realize like how how bad it is compared to what they can possibly get into. So I got like I said, like playing all the other sports, baseball, even like hockey, I was always like, you know, buying up an upgraded pair of skates, yeah, they're lighter, but they're not making you skate better. But like now I can, this is like, we're what, 20 minutes yeah. into the fitting? Right. I can be like golf is, this is like the one sport where the club, the equipment makes. A hundred percent. Yeah. And it, get, it gets exponentially um, more impactful the faster you get. So for you being like, you're on the faster end of things for sure. If you have incorrectly fit equipment, you're lost in space. Whereas if you swing 70 miles an hour, you can have some poorly fit stuff and, and kind of get away with it. Okay. For the most part. Like, like assuming you're not using like super custom, like extra stiff, whatever. If you're just buying clubs from a store, if you swing really slow, it's not as impactful as it is if you're like really fast. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. All right. That's good enough for that one. Swap you out. Basically, every shaft manufacturer makes a um, like I always compare it to cars. Basically, so like if you go to Toyota and Honda, they're all going to have a different type of vehicle that fits the need. Like you got a small SUV, a crossover, a sports car, whatever. This is the sports car from each individual shaft line. Okay. So Dynamic Gold technically owns both of these companies. Okay. <laughs> or True Temper, sorry, owns both these companies. So Dynamic Gold's one shaft line. Um, Project X is a different one. These are basically the same shaft from a different line. Okay. So, so it'll be like the 
sports car. Of, yeah, like I mean, we're basically getting you into stuff that's going to be heavy, pretty heavy and stiff because you're going to need it. Like you, you've got you've got the speed to handle it. We're trying to knock spin down and gain as much stability as possible. So they're similar, but they're different. This one's typically going to spin a little bit more and launch the lowest of anything we try. That one is going to spin like medium low, uh, but launch a little higher. But it's mainly just feel we're looking at. We're not really like, it doesn't change that much. We're talking about like tenths of a degree. You might not even notice it. Okay. It's just, it's, just how, it's a matter how it's... of like how you interpret it. Okay. Does that make sense? So the stats really aren't going to change drastically. No, it's just like how I, how I feel swinging it. Yeah. Like people will obsess over like what a shaft's going to do. And like, no, yeah, what is I'm the not... bend profile of this? It really doesn't matter because if we threw this on a robot and this shaft was launching this head at 16 degrees, 5,000 spin, whatever, that one might be 16.1 with 150 more spin. Okay. Like it really, you, you wouldn't be able like to tell. It's like so micro, you, you won't even really know. So like these are the two most popular shafts that are used in irons currently. It's, it's going to be some version of the Project X or some version of the Dynamic Gold. There's other companies out there that make a ton of shafts. Um, obviously, we've got like graphite options and, you know, whatever, whatever, Nippons. But in general, these are kind of the two. So would you say this shaft is lighter? Because it feels a lot lighter. Yeah. It's, it's not a lot, but it, it is technically. It can also be like the swing weight of the head because it's a different head as well. Okay. Yeah, that could be. All right, we're going to veto that one. That's an X. A little inconsistent with that one. That's okay. That's why we do it. Uh, it's a 790, right? Yeah. 790. Now, you may have to get a little further from the ball, mainly because these aren't going to bend so toe down. So when you're used to that soft flex, it'll kick that toe down and the head gets closer to you and you've adjusted for it. Okay. And these won't do it as much. Because most of your strikes have been out of the heel if you miss it. But that's because like when you swing, like I'm going to kind of get in front of the camera, but um, like most of the time when you swing these like soft ones and it goes like super toe down, the club moves that half inch closer yeah, to you because and you flush it. But with these, it won't, it won't bend nearly as much because it's just more stout. And it makes a big difference. And then you heel shank everything, right? Like, I mean, I can show you the heat map on here too. Um, like all these impact locations um, on average. So even if we go and look at... So like everything's kind of fat and out of the heel. Again, probably too close to the ball just because you're not used to it because this thing bends so differently. It's the same thing. And this was the first one we, like, this was your gamer. And then this was the Shrixon. So immediately going from, you know where the center of the face is realistically. Yeah, to look at that. Now everything's in the heel just because it's bending a little differently. And that's the same with basically every club. Okay, okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's not a lot. It's you know like, what? But it, even like, if the fact that you were you said that, it did it clicked. But like now that I just seen that, yeah. display like that's but that's just how it how it works really with um like bend profiles so you know people talk about like you know how it curves and what you yeah, have why is it curving that way it's not just like the ball just magically curves it has to get an input from the club yes and a lot of that input comes from how the the head kicks on the stick that's that you're holding on and you know i knew i knew like doing this today was going to open up like so many things in my head now as to why stuff does what it yeah. does so if you just get like a half inch further from the ball than you're used to, like whatever feels comfortable and just back yeah. off like that little bit, you should start flushing it. And then you'll just have to obviously adjust over that once you, you know, you get your stuff. Oh, that felt good. Yeah, that was really good. Yeah, that's mangled. That's really good. Mmm. Those sound good. And now that you said, like, it's registering now that to move back a bit. Yeah. It feels weird standing yeah. over it and doing yeah. it. But Whereas if I gave you your club right now from that setup position, you would tow the Everything. shit out of it. You'd hit it off the wall. 
because it would it would just bend. You'd miss the ball. Like you just wouldn't have that that same awareness. Now, is there a difference in feel between the the first like the Strixon and those that you can remember or notice? Or are they uh, similar? I want to say that one the Strixon feels more compact. If that okay. makes sense, like it feels. I don't know how to say it. like this feels this feels good. It feels the, the same weight maybe wise, more, so more solid. Yeah, the Strixon yeah, okay. feels solid. Okay, that's that's the word. Well, that that makes sense. Yeah. So the thing is with the seven nineties is those irons are actually hollow. So there's a cavity in between like the face and the back wall of the iron that they oh. fill with a foam. They call it speed foam. Cause they can't think of a better name. <laughs> no, but, uh, it, it, it does take away from some of that like solid feel that you're going to get. Like that's just a one piece forged piece of steel. Yeah. That feels so, like, like you, a hammer. It's a wood bat. Like it's just as pure as it gets. Just throw it on the lathe and carve that thing out and then, throw it in somebody's hands and hit a ball with it. Whereas this is, that's a composite bat. Like there, there's, they're not going to compare in terms of feel. But yeah. I'm going to kind of veto that one as well. At least that shaft set up. So we'll swap that out. We'll, we were going to try this head again, but what head did I screw on there? The I, already, Mira. I already forget. The What's CB302. All right. Perfect. This will be my first time swinging these. Yeah. They're, uh, they're, they're nice. Um, they're going to feel significantly different than probably anything else we try. They use some of the softest steel you can possibly get. And every one of those heads is handcrafted. They look really nice. They're ri ridiculous. That's what I have in my bag. Yeah. I'm a lefty though, so you can't even hit them. But um, these look like, yeah, not that exact head, but I have some, some years in there. We got, we got to always give them a chance. They know. All right, guys. Thanks for checking out the video. As always, make sure you like the video. You're subscribed to the channel. The link for Doghouse and Ben, all their information will be in the description of the video. Stay tuned. And as always, we'll see you next week for a new video. Take care.